Got another set of questions for the organic nitrogen compounds playlist. This one contains questions on amines, amides, amino acids and thin layer chromatography. So as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so first question is a straightforward percentage yield calculation. So we've got the mass of the amine that we start with. We also know the MR so we don't have to mess around calculating those. So the first thing we'll do is work out how many moles of amine we've got. So mass over MR gives 0 0.0484 moles of amine. The mole ratio is 1 to 1 so we'd expect to make the same number of moles of the amide, this stuff here. So next thing we need to do is work out how many moles we actually made of the amide. So it's the mass over its MR. So that's coming out at 0 0.0241. The percentage yield is the actual divided by the expected multiplied by 100, which gives an answer of 49.8%. So it was option A. Next question, which functional groups have we got in this compound? So have we got an ester? The answer is yes. There it is there. Have we got a secondary amide? The answer is yes. There it is there. Have we got a ketone? No, we haven't. These aren't classed as ketone groups because they're part of another functional group. So we've just got one and two, so it was option B. Moving on to the next question. So some reactions of this alpha amino acid, serine. So we'll go up here first. So if you react this with an acid, so with H plus ions, the acid can be accepted by the lone pair on that nitrogen, which means the NH2 group becomes an NH3 with a plus charge. We'll go up here next. So this combination of alcohol and sulfuric acid, when you react it with an alpha amino acid, it can form an ester with the carboxylic acid group. There's the formula of the product there. If you think about it, we've got acid present, sulfuric acid, so we've got H plus ions. So by rights, this NH2 group should change into an NH3 plus group, just like it did here. But it wasn't actually required by the mark scheme. So NH2 there is absolutely fine. And the third reaction, reacting serine with an excess of ethanoyl chloride. Well, this can react with two groups in this molecule. It can react with the OH alcohol group and it can also react with the amine group. So we're going to form an ester at the bottom there and we're going to form an amide on the left hand side there. So moving on to the calculation now, you'll notice I've got my standard diagram I always draw for questions like this. I've also drawn up um, the equation for the reaction because we're going to need the mole ratio. So out of the choice of R groups, uh, that we've got to play with. There's no NH2 groups in there. So the only NH2 group that can react with the HCl, or the H plus to be more specific, is the one uh, bonded to this alpha carbon. So bottom line, it's a one to one mole ratio. Okay, so the first thing we can do is calculate the moles of HCl used in the titration. So it comes out at 0 0.00375. The moles of the alpha amino acid in that mean titra must be the same from the one-to-one -one ratio. We want to know how many moles are in here in the 250 cm cubed. So the way we do that is we divide by the mean titra to get the moles in one cm cubed and then multiply by 250. So that's coming out at 0 0.0440. So to get the MR of the amino acid, it's mass over moles. So that's coming out at 131. Find the MR of the R group and obviously identify it. We need to subtract the MR of the common part of an alpha amino acid, which is this bit here. So that's 74 for that. So that means the MR of the R group is 57. So all we've got to do now is work out the MR of the different R groups supplied and see which one fits. You can see that we're getting 57 for the R group in leucine. So that's obviously the alpha amino acid. So moving on to the part of the question about TLC, the layer chromatography. So you'll notice I've measured the distance between the baseline and the spot for serine for solvent W. That came out at 20 millimetres on my computer screen. And this distance here from the baseline to the solvent front came out at 58 millimetres. The RF value is just the short distance over the longer distance. 
so I'm getting 0 0.34. The range allowed in the mark scheme was 0 0.33 to 0 0.35. For the very last question, we've got to decide which is the unknown amino acid from the two TLC plates in the two different solvents. So all I've done is put a line across the unknown and you can see that that's matching the RF value in solvent W for leucine and glycine. Whereas when you switch to solvent X, we're getting alanine and glycine. So obviously the Unknown amino acid has got to be glycine because it's matching the RF value in both solvents.